It's only baking day, isn't it? Yes. This is my favourite part of the week. That's why I probably do it three times a week, because I love this bit so much. Today, we're going to turn all of that hard work from yesterday into a finished loaf of bread. <laughs> loaves I prepared yesterday are in the fridge waiting to come out. The way this works is very simple. You superheat your oven, you put inside of your oven your cooking pot during that heating process so that also is exceptionally hot. You take your dough out of the fridge, you cut a few shapes in it, you throw it in the pot, throw it in the oven, about 30 minutes later, job done. Simple, really. All the hard work's done. Now you just get to sit back and enjoy it. A few things we're going to need and it's worth preparing. The pot you're going to cook in, a pair of scissors, and some parchment paper. Back in a moment. As we discussed in one of the previous videos, ideally, if you can, cook inside of a heavyweight casserole dish. If you've only got a metal kind of big boiling pot, that'll also work. That'll do a very similar job, I wouldn't worry about, oh, there's not a great deal of difference. This is the priority, this is a secondary. If you don't have anything like this, if you don't have anything like that, you can just ping it in the oven on its own. Now, just a quick note, if you're going to do that, boil up a kettle of water, get a, get a roasting tin, uh, just a little one, Put the boiling water in there and stick the boiling water in the oven on the shelf below where you're going to bake the bread. That way you're going to create that bigger Dutch oven effect with the, the steam that we're going to create inside of here. So if you don't have one of these, either a metal pot that you'd boil pasta in, the bigger the better, it needs a lid, and as a backup, stick some boiling water in one of these and throw this in the bottom of the oven. I'm going to assume most people have got a pot they're going to be able to work in, so that's what I'm going to demonstrate here. <clears throat> First task, get the oven cranked up hot. The hotter, the better. I work with an arger that essentially doesn't really have a temperature reading, it just says hot, really hot, or super hot. I whack it on super hot, as high as it will go, as high as it will go, not too hot that it trips out. So it's usually anything above about 250 degrees C on a conventional oven. My red pot is already in there heating up and I allow those, I allow the oven and the pot to come up to temperature together for about 45 minutes. The hotter that pot is, the better this process goes, the better your rise and the crust that we're looking for. They all come about from how super hot you can get your pot. Once your 45 minutes have passed and your pot's nice and hot, you're ready to get your bread out of the fridge, cut a little shape in it, and pop them inside. I leave the bread in the fridge for us, uh, up until right until the last moment before I want to put it in the oven. And while I'm cutting the bread, I leave the pot in the oven right until the last minute that I want to put the bread inside of it. Again, the real focus here is containing the heat, not letting it all escape. So I work as close to the moment when I need something and then I get it ready. What I will prepare is a bit of parchment paper. Ooh, I am running low. You don't need much. And you can usually reuse this stuff. I've normally got some on hand, but I've re reused the same bit two or three times, so I need a fresh bit. I'm going to turn my dough out onto here. I'm then going to use the scissors to snip a shape in the top of it. What you achieve by snipping the shape is not only the really cool effect of that kind of like big ear or lots of lots of uh, crusty open parts of the bread. It's an essential part of allowing the bread to rise in a certain direction. If you don't make it easy for the bread to rise by cutting the top, it will really struggle to fully develop into what you want it to develop. You can play with over time how you do your cuts. Today, I would recommend 
keeping it nice and simple. Either do one big cross through the top or do one circular ear with a little extra vent. I'm going to do one of each so you can see them. There's loads of things on the internet, it gives you a whole myriad of options of how patternous and how extravagant you can make it. For these two today, I'm going to keep it nice and simple to show you what I think is the simplest method of turning out a really good looking loaf of bread. The first loaf I'm going to bake is going to be the one we've prepared together. That's the starter we built only, what, five or six days ago now. It's brand new. You're really interested to see how this is going to bake. And then I'm going to throw in my more established starter and we'll see how he comes out in comparison. Okay, give me a minute. Right, I've just had a sneak peek in here and it looks great. He's had a bit of a rise overnight. He's got a really nice round shape to him. Everything looks on point. He's been in the, in the fridge for about, I'm a little bit behind schedule, so it's actually probably closer to 13 hours. <clears throat> He's ready to go. I'm excited. This is really interesting for me because I've been using the same starter for the last six months. So I'm really interested to see how this other one that we've created together is going to turn out. And hopefully at home, if you've been following these steps, you should be able to turn out something quite similar to what we're about to get out of here. Okay, let's uncover it. Look at that beauty. How nice and bulbous he is. Look at that. Lovely jubbly. <sighs> okay, nice and simple. Parchment paper goes on top. We're turning him out onto the parchment paper. We let gravity do most of this work for us. We don't want to force it, we don't want to upset him in any way. If it takes a moment for him to drop out, that's not a problem. We're not going to go digging for him, just going to give him a second. Little tap if he needs it to encourage him. There we go, I think I felt him start to go. Bosh! Look at that guy. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to do a single cut. There's a semicircle across the top and a little vent at the back. So it's going to snip relatively deeply. You want to be able to see his insides and see his nice gooey insides with these cuts. If you've got a blade, you can do it with a blade, but that's a much more advanced technique. There we go. I'm giving him a good cut of a good, you know, several millimetres. I want to be able to see the gooey insides of the bread. Okay, he's now ready to go in the oven. It's as simple as that. I'm going to cut this parchment paper so it's a bit, so it doesn't all get in the way inside of the pot. That's a key tip of mine. If you're working with a much smaller pot, definitely try and cut away as much of this as possible so it doesn't hold back the rise of the bread. But of course, leave yourself two handles to pick it up with. This is going to be hot, this pot. When it comes out, it's going to be glowing hot. Be super careful, please. Oh yeah, that is roasting hot in there. Okay. Lids come off. Bread's come up. Bread's gone in. I'm just going to use the scissors for a moment more to make sure those cuts haven't sealed up as I've picked him up. Make sure they haven't closed up. Make sure the parchment paper isn't going to cause him any problems. Put his lid back on. And in the oven he goes. Boom! First thing you do, set yourself a timer. Don't forget, like I do sometimes, especially when I was just beginning, I was so excited about putting it in that I'd forget to get the timing right. 25 minutes. That's what we need. 25 minutes. <clears throat> the bread is going to sit in there, completely sealed, not touching it, for 25 minutes. Then we're going to open up, we're going to take his hat off, and we're going to hopefully see this nicely risen up, beautiful, fresh smelling loaf of bread. I then usually give it four or five minutes with the lid off. I then 
take it out of its pot, turning it upside down, put it back in on a lower shelf, on a lower heat, for about another 10 or 12 minutes just to let the colour really come through and to finish baking. There's a few other steps at the end, but we'll come to those when we get there. And then we're good. Right now, I'm going to put the kettle on, have a cup of coffee, give it 25 minutes and come back for the really exciting bit. It's that time. It's been 25 minutes for loaf one in the oven. We're about to crack it out. What expectations should you have here? For your first loaf of bread, if you've got this far, got it in the oven without it kind of spilling all over the floor or being halfway up your arm and stuck to the ceiling, you've already done well. If you open the lid in a minute, you get a bit of steam come back and you've got a, a nice pale looking almost loaf of bread, again, you've done really well. Most people on the first bake don't achieve very much at all, not even the first few bakes. So manage your own expectations. I'm hoping mine comes out quite good because although it's a brand new starter, I've got my technique really dialed in. Let's have a little look at how it could be. Oh, timer done. Let's get in there. Come on, my friend. Don't touch that with your hand. Oh, boom town rats. Don't know if you can see that. That is an absolute corker. That's a dream. I'm delighted with that so far. She's going back in the oven for the next five minutes she needs to do. That's an absolute stunner. For a brand new starter, I'm delighted with how that looks. I'm gonna put a five minute timer on now, and then I'm gonna do a couple of minute rotations, but I mean, whew, I'm chuffed with that so far. Back in a minute. I am delighted with this. I think if you'd have asked me before this, what am I expecting out of a brand new starter and my technique, I don't think I'd have got close to this. I, I'm really, really delighted. I think that's come out so good for a brand. That shows you at home how simple it can be to turn out a cracking looking loaf of bread. And this is gonna, this is gonna taste great. I can already smell it. <clears throat> the key thing that I've done well here is my technique is really dialed in. If you concentrate on getting your technique right, that's, you know, that, that came out of a brand new starter. It doesn't have to be 450 years old and infused with lavender. It, it's a pretty simple process. I am chuffed with that. Uh, I'm gonna stick the, uh, I've left the oven super hot. I had to get this one out quite quickly because I didn't want him to catch and burn. I've had to leave the oven super hot because I want to start the next bake straight away. So, I just wanted to show you this one here now. Brilliant, brilliant loaf of bread. I'm now going to throw the other one in and I'll show you a different cutting technique and I'll go through a little bit slower the timings for what you do for putting it in the oven. Okay? <laughs> oh, I'm at... Wait, this. A lovely bottom. Oh, a lovely... I'm chuffed with that. If you've achieved anything like this at home, give yourself a pat on the back, because that is, I'm really happy with that. Do this one. Okay, next one. The oven is super hot and ready to roll. I can pretty much reuse the bit of baking paper I've already had. So let's get him out. That's a bubba. This one should come out a bit easier because of the cloth. Lovely, absolutely lovely. Remember, this is my higher hydration loaf. It's gonna snip him a nice cross. And then some little side ducts to allow him to expand into all these holes. Where the cuts are made, that's where you get the expansion, the rise. Okay, let's get that pot out. Ah. 
nuggets. Here she comes. Let me go. In you go. Okay, again, let's make sure none of those cuts are sealed up. Lovely. Lid goes on. In the oven, 25 minute timer, starting now. So just to quickly recap, what are the timings involved? You wanna superheat your oven for 45 minutes, somewhere around the 250 degrees centigrade, while it's heating, your pot's in there the whole time, getting itself nice and hot. The bread comes out the, out of the fridge at the last minute, when you're ready to pop it in. Stick him in there with the lid on for 25 minutes. As soon as that's done, you're gonna turn the oven down by about, turn the oven down by about a quarter. You're gonna take the lid off and you're gonna basically try and lower it down the oven. The state you want it to go from is very, very, very hot inside the Dutch oven with the lid on to not quite as hot, so a little bit lower down the oven will help, with the lid off. That starts the colouring process. Then, after five minutes with the lid off, you take the loaf out of the tin, you put the tin aside, and you put it back in the oven for kind of two or three minutes at a time. And I slowly rotate it every three or four minutes for about... 10 minutes until it's nice and even coloured and then job done. So, 45 minutes preheat, 25 minutes with the lid on, 5 minutes with the lid off and about 10 minutes out of the pot completely turning him round. Once you've done that, a key 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 tip is to then turn your oven off completely, crack the door open and leave the bread exposed to the cooler air from the outside and the cooling oven. You don't want it to cool too quickly. Um, on this Argo, I've actually got like a proving drawer in the bottom, so I, I pop him down there because it's nice and warm in there with that door open. But you basically, you want to leave it kind of sat in there for the next 10 or 12 minutes as the oven temperature normalizes and as he cools slowly. Then, we stick him on a wire rack for about 45 minutes until he's cooled fully before I cut him open. Let's come back here in 22 minutes to get the last one out of the oven. And then we're done. It's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. It's time. Number two, alarm's just gone off. It's been in there for 25 minutes. Oh, I'm really excited about this one. I can't wait. Cross my fingers, hopefully in a few moments I'm gonna end up with two beautiful looking loaves of bread. Just to remind you, I'm at the stage now where all I'm doing is taking the lid off to inspect it, and I'm turning the oven down and giving it a few more minutes still inside the pot with the lid off. Okay, my pot. Oh yes, look at that guy. Look at that guy. Oh, I'm delighted with that. Right, let's get him in there. That's a roaring success. I always find it very difficult to cook two loaves back to back getting the temperature high enough and stable enough in the oven, but that looks like it's come on really nicely. He's had 25 minutes with the lid on. He's now gonna have, I've now turned the oven down by about a third. I've dropped him down. So it's before where he's quite high in the oven, he's now kind of in the middle or the bottom half of the oven and the lid's off. He's gonna sit like that for five minutes and then we're into the last phase. Right, it's been five minutes. Let's get him out of his pot. Oh yeah, he's looking delightful. Don't need the pot anymore. He's now going directly onto the shelf to finish off the colouring around the outsides of him. He's pretty much baked. He's looking great. Pop this fella here. With that slightly lower oven temperature, he can stand to be completely exposed to the full heat of the oven. That's gonna add this kind of like golden texture to him. It's going to make sure that he's cooked and the crust all the way round and then we're done. If you don't get these little steps right, the time in the pot with his hat on, the time in the pot without his hat on and then a bit of time out of the pot, you'll quite often undercook the base. You'll quite often end up with 
you know, a, a centimetre of undercooked dough inside of the loaf itself. And for me, those are the real signs that you've achieved your first bake properly. Don't worry too much about how ornate it is and what rise you've got. Just look for a consistent baked loaf of bread that's gonna taste really yummy. If it has gone a bit sideways, you can always toast whatever's come out of it. The most important thing is to make sure that you've got a, a thorough cook. You don't have any uncooked dough. That's bad for your belly. I cannot wait to crack this guy open. Now he's in there just by himself. Every, t every three minutes, I'm just gonna turn him round 180 degrees just to make sure he's nice and evenly colored. That's how my oven basically cooks him. I've got hotter parts and cooler parts of the oven, so I need to turn him to make sure he's completely exposed to the hotter parts. If you've got a modern fan-assisted oven, you might just be able to leave him there and it'll color quite evenly. That's something you'll just work on over time. Other than that, I'm gonna prepare to start cutting this bad boy open. I'm absolutely delighted with these. Look at these two. The one on my left, this is the brand new starter we made together as a course what, about six days ago. This one here, this is a higher hydration. My starter I've had developed for several months now, about six months old. That one smells great. I'm really delighted with both of those. This ear and this expansion here on the brand new one has come out better than I could have anticipated for a brand new starter. I'm delighted with it. This one's fresh out the oven, so a little bit too warm to cut into. I'll have a quick cut in to have a look at the inside of this guy, see how he's got on. Ugh, how good is that? Let's have a little look inside this fella. The key thing we're looking for, as I said earlier on, is a nice, consistent, even bake, a nice crispy crust on the outside, and fully cooked dough all the way through. Bang, and that's exactly what we've got. Look at that. We've got the nice, iconic kind of air, little air holes that you get with sourdough bread. Oh, smells delicious. We've got a nice crust all the way round. That's great completely cooked all the way through, exactly what we want for a starter loaf. Mm. As you go up through the levels of hydration into the 70s and beyond, you'll get more and more of these air holes form and have more of a bigger structure on there. Down here at the lower kind of 62%, this is quite typical, lots of little ones, some nice bready texture. This would be great for sandwiches, for toasting, for just eating by itself. I'm gonna dip it in some balsamic vinegar and olive oil and have this as a prelude to my dinner tonight. Oh, I never thought a brand new starter could turn out something this good. It's absolutely cracking. I hope you guys have all got on well in the last two days of preparing a starter and getting it ready to bake. Best of luck with this phase. Send me as much information as you want once you've completed this phase. Any questions, anything you found hard about the prep, anything you found challenging about the bake, send me your photos of how you got on. I'm gonna do one more episode in a few days time, answering all your questions, giving you a few bit of takeaway pieces of advice for how to store your starter for the long term and kind of what to do with it next. And then what to think about when you kind of come to your next bakes and how to work out the formula for how much flour and water to use next time. That'll be in a few days from now. Until then, Keep feeding your starter daily, best of luck with your bake, and I'll see you soon.